Jesus said that he is sending us out as sheep among wolves. Then he tells us, very interestingly, to be shrewd as a viper, but gentle as a dove. This applies incredibly well for those of you who are senior leaders in your organization, and you have someone that you work with or present to who's on a board of directors or a senior leader, all more senior than you, who just doesn't seem to uh, appreciate what you bring and tends to like to be vocal about what they think about you. This is a perfect instruction from Jesus. So keep watching, and I'm going to teach you a few things to consider when you're addressing one of those senior leaders that is not very kind and what it means to be a snake and a dove at the same time. Hi, my name is Sean Summercamp, and this is Motivation Ear Christian Coaching. I post two videos a week, so please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can be reminded when I do. Please also consider becoming a member at MotivationEar.com. Your membership really supports this channel. Thank you. Okay, let me give you a little backstory. The reason why I'm wearing a hat, a ratty old t-shirt, and I just slapped on a jacket. Uh, I got a call, an early call from a client. It's pretty early who works as a senior leader in a very big company and was brought on in a role that requires a lot of intense planning and getting everybody's buy-in and executing on a big solution for this very big company. So she spent the first two or three months in her new role as a senior leader putting together a plan, a process, a system, strategy, and then presented it to all the senior, senior executives. I know I just kind of made that up, senior, senior. But the people, all the people above her. And then one person in that group really was very demeaning during the presentation, unnecessarily. Not just unkind, but rude, arrogant, spiteful, even bitter for no reason. This is the first time my client had ever met this person. So who knows why this happened, but it really did affect my client. So my client called me this morning to talk about it. And very interestingly, my wife and I, this is an uncommon thing for me to really talk about, but my wife and I watch this show. We like to watch anything to do with creating, and it happens to be a reality show. But this is a bunch of designers in Singapore who are designing these apartment layouts. And it's a competition for $100,000. And as the show goes on, it becomes clear one of those designers, anybody she's paired up with, ends up getting judged off the show. She is very combative, very spiteful, venomous, caustic, toxic, whatever other word that you can think of. It's really not fun to watch. It's ugly to watch. But it's surprising she keeps making it through. And now there, there was only, as of last night, five or so left. And her and the person she's teamed up with against one other team of three, they just went at it hardcore. And the guy that she partnered with really got, just got lost it on her because he couldn't stand the way she was treating him. So now it's time for them to present. And the these two didn't do as good of a job. So they're up on the chopping block by the judges to get judged. Well, as it turns out, the judge asked her, finally, why is it that everybody you team up with, you fight so viciously against? And this was her response. She said, in my world, you either dominate or get dominated. Well, as it turns out, this is what was kind of possibly at least happening with my client and this senior executive that was kind of acting bitter towards her for no reason. This could explain what's going on in this dynamic. You might meet people who come across like this the first time, like they're trying to dominate you for some unknown reason. What we wanna do is make sure that we don't jump to a conclusion where we don't make an interpretation internal blocker error and saying, hey, they are acting like this because they wanna dominate me. There could be lots of reasons why they're doing this. Maybe their spouse of 30 years just cheated on them. Maybe their child got a horrible prognosis for an ailment. You know, maybe some other catastrophe is happening in their life. We don't know. 
generally they could be a very assertive type person, but you add in this life tragedy that makes them caustic and bitter. We don't know. But what we do know is Jesus gave us an instruction. I send you out as sheep among wolves. We're going to meet people who are wolves in our corporate uh, ascension, let's say. It happens. It's the way some people think. Some people are just like that. They feel like they are going to dominate or be dominated. I coach lots and lots of women professionals who are Christian, who are devoted to Jesus, who make Jesus Lord of their life. And one of the most common things that I hear from all of them from the beginning of my coaching business till now is, I don't, I want to be very careful how I say this, but if I either act like a strong-willed, angry, bitter woman to get ahead, or I don't get ahead. I hear that from many, many of the women that I coach, but that's not true. You can be a great, gentle, kind leader and get ahead wonderfully in the biggest companies in the world. You can let the gospel light shine through you, the peace and patience of Christ, and excel powerfully, even as a woman, in that mode. Women can earn great respect for dignity, a level head, calmness, seeking, um, you know, being a peace lover, seeking that peace. But, you know, we also want to add a lot of value. But what do we do in this situation then? Well, as I worked with my client on this, we want to keep the mindset, okay, this person might be a wolf. We are a sheep. Let's be gentle. Number one role, a snake. Think about it for a minute. Why would Jesus say be shrewd as a viper? This is my take on it. I haven't read a lot of theologians, but it seems kind of obvious to me at least because the snake is the shortest. (laughs) They are on the ground. They can't, yeah, a cobra can raise up, but basically to move around, Everything else is infinitely taller than them. They can get stepped on and crushed. So a snake, to be shrewd, is kind of moving around to not get stepped on. So what we want to do when confronting or dealing with a situation like this is to not let them step on us. And sometimes that means moving around them. It doesn't mean biting them. We don't want to do that because we're going to be gentle, right? Gentle as a dove. Doves aren't biting things. They peck at little pieces of grain, but that's it. Okay, so how do we then... Uh, move around them. I say, like I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, how to deal with a passive aggressive employee or passive aggressive people, give them the benefit of the doubt and find out if they even realize that's how they were coming across. Go back and watch that video. I don't want to repeat all of it. I think I give some pretty sound advice. Now, in this situation, what I recommended to my client, if this is the first time it happened, before taking action, wait until you have at least two data points that demonstrate this behavior. We don't want to be too quick to respond. And maybe even most importantly, we want to take ourselves out of it. When we approach this person, it's for the good of the company. Not because they hurt our feelings or offended us. Who cares? That that doesn't matter ultimately. That's not what makes a business successful. What does make a business successful is when all the team, all the people, the entire team, all the people on the team, adapt to each other's behavior to be the best team possible. So you can go back and watch that video, as I mentioned, dealing with passive aggressive people. There might come a time where you tell this person in being shrewd, hey, look, for the sake of the team and our future success, you acting like that when we're in a big open meeting is not going to work very well for me. Okay. What are the steps then to enact a plan? Step one, always commit your way to the Lord. I say one way to commit that is by asking God to allow you to find favor in their eyes. Number two, write out a script of exactly what you want to say. Get prepared in that way. Practice the script quite a bit so you can get ready to say it. And then number three, when we deliver it, make sure that we're at peace about them. And to accomplish that, visualize the outcome of that conversation being successful. Close your eyes. Think about you delivering it to them peacefully them thinking, then responding to you peacefully, and then them thanking you for the situation, and then you you break. Visualize that so that when you bring yourself to that discussion, the visualization has prepared your body for a peaceful encounter. Where the opposite, if you think, oh, this is just gonna be a war, they're gonna fight back, I'm gonna have to get tough, then you bring that type of physical presence like a warlike presence into the conversation and the conversation probably won't go as well, okay? This is my technique 
please forgive my shoddy, uh, somewhat unprofessional appearance. I didn't want to let this go. I just got off the phone with my client. I really hope this benefits to you as well. If it does, please put a comment below and let me know about your situation, leaving names and times and dates and company names out of it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for two new videos each week. Tell me in the comments below about your career situation and I'll make a video for you with a shout out. You can also become a member at motivationear.com. Your career is not just a way to make a living, it's a way to transform the world.